So it looks like we have some more unusual discoveries coming out of James Webb, and once again, from some of the farthest reaches of the universe. A few more very unusual, unexplainable galaxies, and one containing an incredibly large black hole that currently does not make a lot of sense. And also at least one galaxy that definitively shows us there is really something missing in our current understanding of how we believe galaxies evolve. A galaxy that you see right here, and a galaxy we're going to be exploring in this video. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to tackle some of the very recent discoveries out of James Webb once again, and talk about these very strange black holes and these very strange galaxies. Which kind of complements some of the discoveries that were made previously, with videos describing them in the description below. But I guess let's start with the image you see right here. An image showing us very small red dots, which in reality represent very unusual active supermassive black holes, some of which are billions of solar masses in mass. But all of them existing in the first billion years of the universe, implying that these black holes must have grown very large very quick. And some of these dimmest red spots represent black holes that seem to be entirely covered by dust, which makes them appear red. And it was only recently that researchers realized these were very ancient quasars. Previously they just appeared as tiny red galaxies, because the Hubble Space Telescope was not able to see black holes inside. And so even though some quasars usually reach billions of solar masses in mass, and can actually be even called problematic quasars because they're just way too big to exist so early, what we're seeing here are probably just baby quasars. Quasars that are still developing and still have a lot of dust around them, with much smaller black holes, maybe 10 to 100 million solar masses, still much larger than the black hole in the Milky Way, but hundreds of times smaller than some of the brightest quasars we've seen. And it's actually really interesting how these quasars were discovered and why they were not seen previously by other telescopes. In essence, it's all a result of very specific observations of hydrogen, a spectroscopic observation known as hydrogen alpha. It's produced in a very specific frequency, but sometimes when this line becomes much wider, it actually implies that the hydrogen in this case seems to be moving really fast in different directions. It's essentially the result of the redshift and blue shift effects. And in this case, the researchers realized that many of these galaxies contain hydrogen lines where hydrogen is moving 1200 to sometimes 3700 kilometers per second. And the only way for hydrogen to move that fast is to basically be orbiting a massive black hole. Which is precisely what happened here. Many of these red dots contain these unusual observations, which allow the scientists to calculate the mass of the black hole and classify these as baby quasars. But because only 1% of such objects was discovered compared to all of the galaxies at this distance, it actually implies that many of them are probably hidden from us by even more gas and are thus invisible. But they seem to be very abundant everywhere and will probably be discovered with time. But a much more interesting black hole was discovered in a galaxy you see right here, at a redshift of 6.7, or basically when the universe was about 800 million years old. And surprisingly this was not a quasar, but did contain a massive black hole in the middle, discovered in a very similar way. And unlike those active black holes with a lot of emissions and very powerful jets, this one was very unusual. First of all, the whole galaxy and the black hole itself were very faint, and the black hole was quiescent. It was not producing a lot of emissions, and it took a while to confirm its existence. But even more interestingly was its total mass and total size. It was roughly around 400 million solar masses, or 100 times as massive as the one in the Milky Way. But this galaxy was kind of tiny. Actually, the whole galaxy here contained just a little bit more mass than the black hole. And so here, strangely enough, we have a black hole whose mass is thousands of times more massive than what we actually expect from a galaxy. Moreover, it's quiescent and is not producing a lot of emissions, or basically it's a dormant black hole, and is already in existence 800 million years after the Big Bang. And when you compare this black hole and a galaxy to the Milky Way, it becomes pretty obvious why this is strange. Our galaxy is about 10,000 times more massive than the black hole in the center. In this galaxy, the mass between the black hole and the galaxy are practically the same. So this is an overmassive black hole. A black hole that kind of makes no sense. And so here this observation provides us with maybe a few new suggestions and new explanations. First, maybe this black hole was actually growing very fast in supermassive bursts, which would then pause for a few million years. And we're just observing one of these pauses. Second of all, this black hole 
very likely dramatically stopped the formation of the galaxy around it, thus preventing star formation and making the galaxy appear much smaller overall. But by itself, because this black hole is so massive and so faint, it officially makes it a kind of a record holder, the most distant quiescent black hole and actually one of the strangest black hole systems we've discovered so far. Just the fact that it's almost as massive as the whole galaxy is already kind of strange. Although here the researchers believe that it might restart its activity once there is some kind of a galactic collision and once it merges with something else. So this pause might last anywhere from 4 to maybe 10 million years and it's maybe something black holes do in general, we've just never really seen it before. And that actually takes us to that last discovery that also sort of doesn't make sense. A galactic collision that's sort of really extreme. An unusual galactic collision from the early universe. And here this is even earlier or farther away, approximately 500 million years after the Big Bang. And a galaxy known as GZ9P3 at a redshift of 9.3. And this galaxy seems to be a result of a major galactic collision, something that we are essentially observing right here. But interestingly, it appears to be at least 10 times more massive than anything else in the vicinity of this galaxy or in these distant parts of the universe. It already contains several billion stars and these stars must have developed very quickly. On top of this, it contains relatively complex elements. There are signs of silicon, carbon, iron, which basically suggest a population of older stars that enriched this galaxy through various supernova. And so here the evidence suggests an extremely quick development and evolution and even a very efficient galactic merger suddenly forming a relatively large massive galaxy. Now obviously not as massive as the Milky Way, much much smaller, but much more massive than anything else just 500 million years after the Big Bang. And because we see this galaxy, it means that these are not uncommon, this is not some kind of an exception. Instead this most likely suggests that the star formation and galactic formation early on was way way more efficient and very likely quite different from what we expected and resulted in massive galaxies pretty quickly compared to what was expected or simulated by supercomputers. In other words, stars and galaxies must have formed much quicker than anyone ever thought. And because a lot of these stars seem to be actually pretty young, it still means that the Big Bang very likely happened, but what happened in that first billion years was very different from what we think. With this unusual galaxy providing more evidence for how extreme this period was and how little we understand about it, even after two years of James Webb observations. But I think eventually, once we get even more observations and even more evidence from other regions, the researchers will finally start connecting the dots and most of this will probably make sense eventually. For now, it doesn't. I mean, for now there's definitely a lot of contradiction and a lot of discoveries that kind of don't make sense yet, but James Webb has only been operational for just under two years and we still have so many years to go. On that note, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. We'll come back and talk more about this once there's some maybe clarification or additional discoveries. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos from the James Webb with other unusual discoveries in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.